we're going to do some auto tracing with our logo. First, uh, make a new Illustrator file. So I made mine eight and a half by 11. And um, I've also imported a uh, reference photo. So this is from the book or from the PDF. So you can take a screenshot and paste it in here. That's an easy way to do it um, or wherever you get it from. Second, I'd like to place my photograph that I took of my artwork. And you do that through File, Place. I have mine on my desktop. And it's a photograph right here that I took. So I'm going to place it. Uh, when you click, it's going to be massive. It's just massive sort of thing. Photographs are really big anymore. So uh, compared to a, a piece of paper, they're really big. So I'm going to actually zoom out and then get it small so it fits on my page. Now I could clean this up all I want to, but Illustrator does a pretty good job of tracing what it thinks is black and then separating it from what's white. Let's see what happens. First, you have to select your image. And then up here at the top, you can see that there's an option for image trace. Just going to click that and it's going to work through and give you a result that it thinks that you want. So this is just right out of the box. Up here, next to that tracing result, there's this little image trace panel. And if I click that, I get some options some different presets. Threshold is a big part of this. This is basically kind of increasing contrast. And then um, the amount of noise in corners. You can kind of play around with that sort of stuff. So I'm going to just dial this a little bit, not a ton. And you can see it kind of cleans up that edge. I kind of like this. It's fine. It's not perfect, but it's got a little bit of grunge to it. You can increase the corners and get a little more accurate. But pretty much that's that's what I'm looking for. You need to expand your auto trace. Right now it's not editable. It's just a photograph still. And you have to hit this expand button. Now you can see all the blue dots are there. This is a group of vectors. So the next step is I'm going to close this up and right click and ungroup. Doesn't look like anything's changed, but I can select this white shape and I can move it like that or delete it. Now I want to delete all the white. There's actually little tiny bits of white inside. So if you just delete the background, you're going to be left with these little white bits. So it's wise to use the magic wand tool. That's going to select by color. I'm just going to click on the white background and then it selects everything and then delete. Okay. Looks pretty much the same. I see this little chunk out here. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Maybe zoom in a bit and I can prove that there's no background by just putting a like a rectangle and uh, maybe I color it, oops, color it something and then I'm going to send it to the back and every little thing I can see through is showing that background color. So that's one way to prove it. Do you have all the white gone? So I'll get rid of that. So that's the first step is to vectorize your work. You're going to take your sketch, bring it into Illustrator and let that program sort of uh, auto trace it. So a really great tool. Um, next, I'm going to bring in my reference. Now I want to add some color and some details to my, my lettering and then I'll be done. This is kind of the last step of finalizing it. So I'm going to select all of my J, group it, select all of my H, and group that. Control G or Command G. Um, I sort of like this color, so I'm going to select both of these things, grab my eyedropper and just click on that. Since that's a fill over there, it translates to a fill over here and the colors are kind of washed out. So I'm, I'm going to bring my color palette up and tweak this a little bit. You can copy what I just did right there if you want to. So I'm going to make that a little lighter. Just replay that until you get it. Um, I'd like a stroke on this as well. So now I could put a stroke on this, but this stuff might, might mess me up. So I'll try it. I'm just going to put a stroke on this. So I'm going to click here, hold my eyedropper, and hold shift down to put a stroke on my current artwork. And I'd like that to be bigger. And it's pretty pretty chunky right here, so I can make some make some changes. Um, the first change I'm going to do is under stroke, I'm going to make my caps and my corners rounded. So that helps. And then I'm going to align the stroke to the outside. So it goes outward. 
And as predicted, there's some weird stuff happening here. So if you don't like the results, I'm actually going to remove that stroke. Here's another way to think about it. I'm going to select them both. Copy, paste, and back. So now there's a copy behind. And I'll do that same thing. I'll click on the stroke, eyedropper, and put the stroke on there. Now there's a shape behind it, and I can kind of do the same thing, but I'm not getting that weird stuff sort of in the middle of my art. So you can see there's a J here that with no stroke and then a J behind it with a stroke. Great. I could, you know, I could arrange things now, but I know I have some more to do. Okay. I'm happy with the color, happy with the stroke. Next is adding some embellishments and some detail. And uh, I might play with color a little bit and let's see how we can do that. First of all, I, I notice in my design over here, I have little circles. So I'm just going to grab the uh, ellipse tool and drag out a circle. I grab this color and switch the colors. I don't want there to be a stroke on there. I'm just going to make a green, dark green circle. Copy and paste. Control C, Control V. And I'm going to place that circle in a couple of spots. I can also Alt or Option drag. That's where I'm going to put my circles. Cool. Getting there. Next, I want some line work. Now, I could have drawn this and auto traced it if you want it to be that kind of hand drawn feel, or you could combine and put some uh, computer generated art in there. I'm going to do a little design here and maybe I can copy and paste that. So, first, I'm going to do a line segment tool right here. I'm going to switch my color so it's dark green as a stroke and just draw a line and just from dot to dot. Next, I'm going to use the Width tool, Shift-W. I love this tool. Just make that a little thicker. Um, that's kind of cool. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to grab the Pen tool and make this unique design here. Width tool. Um, I like that. Um, right click and transform reflect. Very, very cool option. I can make a copy of that and it gives me a duplicate and I can just kind of tweak this like that. That's kind of a neat design there. I can now I'll drag that over there. Maybe I want my circle there instead. It's kind of cool. Gives it this hand drawn sort of feel still. Uh, maybe I want a line going down here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna alt drag this line. Grab this point. Pen tool. Uh, hold Alt or Option, and now I have this line that's kind of thick and thin. That helps maybe round it out. Here's another thing you can do. You can add some texture. Um, I'm gonna grab my blob brush. Love this tool. Shift B, and this is just a paintbrush like in Photoshop and it paints with solid color, so I can put some little specks and flex and stuff here. If I want a bigger brush, I can press the right bracket and throw a bigger one down there. So I'm just going to do some texturing. I like that small brush. That's a cool look. So just some details. Now my style is very sort of hand-drawn, almost wooden, and I'm just leaning into it. A lot of hand-drawn sort of feel to this. If you don't want yours to be hand-drawn feeling, don't worry about that. Maybe this step isn't for you. Make sound effects while you're doing stuff. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna group all this again because there's a lot of stuff there. Control G is group, so I don't lose my stuff. So I have an H, and I have a J. Um, the next thing, I, the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give this a little bit of thickness. It's just kind of flat, so I'm going to do this. Select them all, and then right, right click and copy. I'm going to do that same trick. Right click, paste, and back. And now there's another one behind it. I'm just going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard and just pull this over a little bit. Just nudge it so it's got a little bit of thickness to it. So now there's four groups. That looks like it's got a little thickness there. That's pretty cool. I'm going to take this whole group. and Maybe I just tweak the arrangement. Whole group. There's two objects there. 
And I think, I think I'm done. I'm very happy with that. So I can get rid of my reference, save this file as a uh, PDF or an Illustrator file. Since there's no fonts there, I'll take either one. And this is your word mark, or this is my word mark. So hopefully this helps you complete your word mark process in a short little video.